Welcome to another edition of Hey DT. Hey DT is a series of videos where I respond to viewer questions and comments. These viewer questions and comments, they typically come from comments on the videos posted on YouTube and Odyssey. Sometimes these questions come through social media such as Reddit or Mastodon. Sometimes these questions come through email. The very first question I want to respond to is, Hey DT, what kind of virtualization do you use? Well, I use Vert Manager. I've used a few different things in the past. When I first started my YouTube channel, I mainly stuck with Oracle's VirtualBox. And VirtualBox is a really nice virtual machine program because VirtualBox is cross-platform in that it is available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's available on all three operating systems. And as somebody that was primarily concerned with trying to get folks from Windows over to Linux, it kind of made sense to use virtualization software that was available on both Windows and Linux. But several years ago, I switched over to using Vert Manager. Now, if you don't know what Vert Manager is, it's a graphical front end to KVM. KVM is Linux's kernel virtual machine. So Linux has the ability to have virtual machines, obviously. And when you use something like KVM or Vert Manager as a front end to KVM, these virtual machines, unlike VirtualBox, these KVM virtual machines can access your system's hardware. It can actually use your CPU, for example, right? You just get much better performance. You get much better efficiency by using KVM rather than VirtualBox if you're already on a Linux machine. Moving on to the next question. Hey DT, what is your favorite Linux command? So I've been doing this series of video man pages where I take a specific shell utility, a shell command, and I make a short little video, a video man page about all these various commands. I've done like two dozen of these already. And people want to know, what is my favorite Linux command? I've had this question come up a couple of times. My favorite Linux command, I guess, if I'm being completely honest, as far as something that I run all the time, it wouldn't be like a shell command. I would My favorite command would be Emacs. I'm launching Emacs because that's what I spend most of my time in as far as a text editor and a terminal and even a file manager these days. I'm very invested in org mode when I do any kind of writing. So I guess technically speaking, Emacs is my favorite command, although that's a cop out because Emacs is a GUI program, you probably wanted shell programs, right? You wanted, you know, something uh, like a shell utility. I guess my favorite shell utility would be awk. I, I love the awk programming language and the awk command. You know, it's just very powerful. I guess that's a bit of a cop out too, because awk is not necessarily a command. It is an actual programming language. A better example of a command I don't think most people know about, or it's lesser known, is I do love Pandoc. Pandoc is a shell command that can convert document formats, you know, one document format into another document format. For example, it can convert my ODT documents into PDF or HTML, or it can convert my org mode document into Markdown or whatever it happens to be. You know, it can convert all of these various document formats into other document formats, and it's a fantastic tool. Moving on to the next question. Hey, DT, could you maybe make a guide on creating a custom Doom Emacs literate config in org mode with essential stuff everyone should have in your opinion? Or make an addition to the Emacs Alpaca series with stuff to speed it up like lazy load etc. So this is interesting because yeah I do need to get back into some Doom Emacs content. So I've got my own custom config of Emacs. Basically I started with just vanilla GNU Emacs and I've created my own custom config and it's certainly nice but a lot of people do like using Doom Emacs as a starting point. And I really loved my time in Doom Emacs. I used Doom Emacs for a few years before switching over to just creating my own GNU Emacs config. And I've kind of been toying with the idea of moving back to Doom Emacs, uh, just because I know a lot of you guys are using that and I can make some new content, some updated content on Doom Emacs. If that is something you guys would like to see, I would love to hear you guys in the comments down below. Matter of fact, I'll make a pinned comment do you want some Doom Emacs content? Next up is a comment from one of my Boomer Vlog videos. So one of the videos I typically record on my phone. He writes, hey DT, your steering wheel, it's on the wrong side of the car. Hmm. 
So, you know, when I read this comment, I actually had to go back to the video to see if he was right, because obviously when you record videos on your phone, it records it mirrored, meaning the image is reversed. Like if I was recording this on my phone, you know, the words on my shirt would be backwards. In this case, I'm sitting in my car here in the U.S. The steering wheel's on the left side of the car. It would be on the right side if I recorded on my phone. But typically, I always remember anytime I record a video on my phone, I always flip the image so it actually looks like a normal image. And I did do that in the case of this video. So when he says my steering wheel's on the wrong side of the car, I think it's because he's he lives in one of these weird countries where their steering wheel, for whatever reason, is on the right side of the car. I don't understand it. You know, here in the US, we like to drive on the right side of the street. In some countries, they drive on the left side of the street. It, it doesn't make any sense. Matter of fact, we need to actually, we need like a UN resolution. We just need to have this thing settled globally, right? Right. Uh, every car should have the steering wheel on the left and we should all drive on the right side of the street. We should just make that mandatory across the globe. Now, I know some of you guys are probably going to vehemently disagree with this, right? Especially a lot of you Europeans, you know, you're used to driving on the wrong side of the road. But hey, you guys also typically you drink way too much alcohol compared to us Americans. But then again, you know, there's a flip side. We typically drink way too much caffeinated beverages, especially coffee. We typically buy coffee in sizes, cup sizes that are large enough to kill a small elephant. On top of that, you know, you guys in Europe, you, you're smart enough not to have pharmaceutical ads on TV where I have to watch ad after ad for various drugs every day. If I hear the phrase, do you have moderate to severe ulcerative colitis? If I have to hear that one more time, I'm going to go insane. Moving on. Hey, DT, how did you paint your terminal? The added colors. So uh, what he's asking here, how did I paint my terminal? Uh, there's a couple of different things he could be talking about in this case, because I think this comment came from one of the video man page uh, videos that I've been doing. He's asking about my my shell prompt. My shell prompt has some colorful text, you know, different color text in the bash prompt or the fish prompt, whatever shell I happen to be using in that particular video. And that prompt is called Starship. There is a package called Starship. It's in most Linux distributions repos. You add that package, you add a line to your bash RC file, and boom, you have the same Starship prompt that I have in my videos. He also could have been asking about my shell color scripts, which is the random ASCII art that comes up every time I open a new terminal. He also could have been asking about the EZA command. EZA is a LS replacement. It's basically a more colorful version of the LS command. Moving on, this is a comment from one of the video man pages that I've been doing. This one was the video I did on the SEQ command, the sequence command. He writes, hey DT, the shove command does not need sequence or head commands to do what you show at some timestamp in this video. Well, I know that, right? Of course I know that, right? And a lot of times when I'm doing these videos, I'm trying to show specific commands. And in this case, this video was about the sequence command. I know I could use shuff to do what I did with the sequence command in conjunction with head and shuff. But again, that video was specifically about the sequence command. I knew people were going to make your comment. <laughs> Part of the things I do, a lot of times I do try to game the YouTube algorithm by tricking you guys into making comments because I knew people were going to be like, hey, the chef command does exactly what you did with this command here. Well, guess what? I've already recorded a video about the chef command. And in that video, I'm actually going to show the command you wanted me to show in the sequence video. So stay tuned for that. Actually, by the time this episode of Hey DT drops, that video about chef will probably already be out. Next up, Hey DT, can you please turn the Hey DT series into a podcast with RSS feeds so that I can listen to it from a podcast client? So I've had a couple of people ask me about this, uh, not just about Hey DT, but about a lot of my videos, the ones that aren't tutorials where you actually have to watch the screen, you know, the ones that are just talking head videos like the Hey DT series. Hey, could I turn those into audio podcast and upload those somewhere where you guys that you know want to listen while you're on the treadmill at the gym or whatever it is driving in the car you you can listen to those audio podcasts I don't mind doing that. It would require a little bit of work on my part, but if there's enough people that actually want to see Hey DT become 
an audio podcast, I don't mind doing that. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you're interested in. And the final question for this edition of Hey DT is, Hey DT, you say we should never take offense to what others say, but why is it wrong to get offended? Isn't it my right to be offended by something? So I've stated many times on camera over the years that it is wrong to take offense to things that people say, right? I often say that you should never be offended by anything someone says. You should only be offended if somebody physically touches you. If they put their hands on you, if somebody physically attacks you, then you should take offense. Then you should be angry. Then you should respond, sometimes respond in a violent way, right? But only if somebody actually is physically attacking you. Anything somebody says verbally, you should never be offended by. That's just words, meaningless words. Now this person asks, well, why is it wrong to take offense to things? Why can't I be offended? Isn't it my right to be offended? And yes, it's your right. You're, you can be offended, right? You have the right to be offended. Now, is it wrong? Yes, I would say it is wrong. Uh, as far as your personal growth and development and your spiritual growth and development, taking offense to things, to taking offense to words people say is always wrong. It, and you can see this out in the world. What is the problem with the world as it exists today? And really going back through history, a lot of times it's the violence, right? It's the hate, it's the anger that leads to violence. What does all that start with? It starts with people taking offense. That's all it is, right? There has never been a fight that didn't begin with somebody taking offense to some thing, to some words somebody said or some actions that somebody did that didn't involve them already attacking you, right? Violence never starts with violence. You know, if you go to the root of it, the root of it is typically just people being overly sensitive and taking offense. And then that leads them to this irrational action, this behavior that eventually leads to violence. You see this all over the world right now. And you have to understand that if you're one of these people that gets easily offended by things people say or do, that's a you problem. That's not a them problem, right? So uh, if, for example, something I've said in today's video, if, if it offends you, that's your problem, right? That's not my problem. Uh, it's not my responsibility to try to please you and, and try to make sure that I don't offend you in some way because anybody can be offended by anything at any time, right? It's impossible to never offend somebody. Now, you shouldn't go out of your way to offend people. You shouldn't try to be disrespectful. And here, here's the problem with the world today. We've got too many people that are way too easily offended. And then on the flip side, we've got people that know, hey, all of these people that are walking around here that get easily offended, I'm gonna be a troll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to really stick it to them. I'm gonna say, crazy shit. I'm going to be disrespectful. I'm going to be rude. I'm going to be just really demeaning. And I'm going to trigger all of these easily offended people. And basically, you guys are getting trolled half the time, the ones that are being easily offended, because the people that are offending you are actually trying to offend you. And then you're playing into their hands. And you shouldn't, because those people that are purposely trying to offend you, those guys are assholes, right? We know they're assholes. Ignore them, right? But you're, you're falling into the trap. So those of you that are very easily offended, you know, I, I do think you are flawed people and, and you need to work on that. I, I, and I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm not trying to insult you. This is a flaw. It's a character flaw. You need to work on it. I also think that those assholes, those trolls that are out there purposely trying to trigger people that have this easily offended uh, affliction, right? I think those trolls are equally as flawed. Actually, I think they're more flawed because I think those people are despicable because they know what they're doing. They know that you, the person that's easily offended, you have a problem that you need to work out and they're not trying to help you with your problem. They're trying to basically make the problem worse, right? They're trying to trigger you. They're actually trying to reinforce your bad behavior. They're actually trying to harm you. And for people that are out there trying to actively harm other people, I just think they're despicable and disgusting people. I want nothing to do with them. You see this everywhere in life these days, though. And unfortunately, uh, bringing this back to Linux and free and open source software in the Linux and the free and open source software community, we've got a lot of both sides. We've got a lot of people that are easily offended 
And then we've got a lot of the trolls that purposely try to trigger the people that are easily offended. And that's part of the reason these days I really don't hang out in any open source kind of community, forums, chat rooms, any kind of groups, because there's way too many of both of these flawed groups of people that I I can't be around. So that's it for this version of Hey DT. Before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. I need to thank Matt, Steve, 40 Millimeter, Cat Caveman, Darloff, Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, War Gentle, and Ubuntu, and Willie. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode of Hey DT would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen right now. Now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source software, and life, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.